In one of my previous videos when I had Labora I said that Rune Tracer deals pretty much all the damage and the other weapons that you pick barely matter. So I decided to go for a run, again with Labora, Holy Wand and Thousand Edge. And I added this as a little bonus after the video so you can actually see how much damage they really do. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to a new Reaper kill video because the banish ability is in the game. If you don't know it with banish you can ban something that you don't own yet and you won't get it in level ups anymore but the way more interesting mechanic with it is that you can banish something that you already have and it will not appear anymore. That means you can for example restore- ooh that's gonna be spicy. You can restrict certain level ups or certain weapons to a lower level just by banishing it and that is exactly what we will do and I pretty much went over every single combination that is possible in the game uh, Brazer, nice that is possible in the game with the help of Kekos, shout out to him he wrote a script to get pretty much all the combination calculated and I used that to drag out the data and make my own calculations and well he very quickly ca caught up with that and actually just did it himself as well but I can say at least I did my part in Excel and I have the entire list there, even if the result in the end was the same. And this is by far the most optimal combination that you can do, but later on why it might not be, because stuff is a bit complicated. So first of all, your ultimate goal is to go into this with the max amount of power-ups, right? So 5% cooldown reduced and duration up by 30%. Yes, this is your max goal. This is what you can affect, depending on what power-ups you have, what level of Spellbinder you have, what level of Empty Tomb you have, and what level of Clock Lens that you have, to freeze the Reaper longer, or shorter, or that the cooldown of the Clock Lens is shorter, right? So how fast it goes around you. And this is by far the best combination I have found, so I'll go for it, I'll show it to you. I'm actually quite a bit concerned right now, this is not looking too good. Okay, there's Tiragisu. Usually if I don't die when I get all this stuff, I will not go for Tiragisu, so I'll just not do it. Uh, let's go for Clock Lancer, there we go. And uh, that means I can go for Spinach. Alright, just had to make a quick check. Yes, I can go for Spinach, that is fine. Uh, spinach, here we go. He's kind of stuck over there, that's funny. Empty Tome. So yeah, in case you couldn't follow up on this, there are multiple ways on how you can affect the rotation of your Clock Lancet and how long it freezes, perfect Spellbinder, how long it freezes the Reaper. So my main goal is to get this to a point where whenever he unfreezes, he's pretty much, ooh no, he's moving. He's pretty much frozen immediately again, right? This would be perfect, but the problem is, let's say for example, the Clock Lancet hits on the top right. Oh, Duplicator, perfect. So no Tiragisu this run. Uh, because I, you know, less damage, I don't want to. Um, yeah, let's go for the Clock Lancet here, because I don't want to talk, and this is where you ban Clock Lancet. The moment it's level 5, okay, don't confuse this just because it says level 6, the moment it's level 5, you banish it. Gone. Don't get this cooldown reduction, it's, it's out of the world here. There we go. So yeah, just to explain what the problem is, what I meant initially, that there, you know, a perfect build is rather in quotation marks perfect. When your Clock Lancet hits on the top right and freezes the Reaper and it comes around, you can't really make it perfect because that would be a zero second delay and you can't really do that in the game. It's impossible. There's always a delay. Delay means the Reaper could in theory move and jump over to the left side, but your next strike will be where he was a second ago, right? So he will not be frozen for an entire rotation. So what I like to have is just one tick behind, uh, you will see it later, one tick behind. So if the Reaper is frozen on the top right, then it will freeze him in the middle and then go to the top right. So it's pretty much one tick behind, but given that we have an invulnerability shield, that is more than enough. Okay, there we finally have LOL. Um, Spellbinder. Everything else can be maxed out, and this is why this build is so good. You don't have to think of anything, pretty much. You can be maxed out. I tried a lot of different runs, and I thought about maybe, you know, showing them off, but actually, no. I tried all kinds of combinations that were in the Excel that should have worked well, and they kind of did, but the main problem was, whenever you went down on the starting cooldown, and especially the starting duration, your Rune Tracer would end up disappearing before it gets shot out again. So enemies would more often walk into you and killing you, and, you know, overall, it, it just wasn't nice. So I wanted to go for a way that maxes out everything, and funny enough, this build is pretty much in the top builds. So, amazing, right? Perfect combination. Let's skip here. 
Oh, knife perfect. Okay, now I can just spam everything. I wanted to see if I can maybe get bone. The way you get bone is just you get all the passive weapons, so they there can't be new ones offered. And then you just hope that you roll into a bone. But this can of course also go wrong. Let's see how long this takes. And I'm not gonna explain the basics here, okay? This is an update if you already watched the old video. Um, I'm just gonna s roughly say what I'm doing here. You see the build, you see what I did, I don't think I have to explain anything. In short, if you're watching this video and you see me do something, do not assume you can simply change that and expect the same results, okay? You can change something if you want to, but if you don't get the same result, then yeah, that's probably the reason. You, you did a change on your own. So now we just need two chests, there's a thousand edge. And I think he's unfrozen rather soon, so let me get the second upgrade. Now, the way, what you want to do here pretty much, there are two prime positions. One is in my opinion super easy, one is more difficult. And one is on the bottom left of this table here, which is honestly really good, but there's one that deals more damage but is a bit more risky that I'll go for. Which is on the top right here of this bookshelf, so let me push him over. That's not exactly what you want to see because he's stuck in there now. So what I'll do is I'll just stand over here and hope I can still damage him. And now I'll just walk down here because he's about to unfreeze. Wait until he jumps down. The clock lens is sadly invisible. This is something that I've noticed for a while now. Could you actually just move down? Oh... Uh, yeah, you remember when I talked about perfect timing? <laughs> there we go. Okay. So he's in there. So what I'm... Oh, that is not the best timing. Okay, finally. So what will happen is he's stuck in the corner there. And I will slightly bump up. And as you can see, Rune Tracer, do you see this how it's bouncing mostly in the corner over there? This is pretty much the goal of this entire thing. And I'm just shooting at him as crazy as I can. As you can see, the Rune Tracers rarely go to the left side, which means they are all bouncing within here. And deal an insane, absurd amount of damage. Sadly, we can't see the Clock Lancet right now. That would be a lot more interesting. It sucks that it can go invisible. I don't really know why. But yeah, okay. Um, now I have to be a bit careful here. Because you move to my left side. The knives, the even if you get Labora, the Holy Wand, they all deal barely any damage. Do not think about them too much. All I want to do now is the least movement possible. So I don't mess anything up, right? The last, the, the one thing that we don't want to see is a second Reaper move in here. Technically speaking, we could continue this forever. Because uh, do you see how quickly he gets frozen after he's unfrozen? Same for this guy over here. It takes a slight delay that is intentional as I explained. But that's it, right? And so shortly after he is frozen again and our shield can recover and it's it's amazing. And there he is. It's, it's done. That was it. It was that simple. Even with this bad run where he was stuck over there for what, 40 seconds or so? He's, he died within a minute. Yeah, this is definitely no build you can go infinite with 34 minutes. It's, it's simply when the Reapers bump into each other. Like while one is unfrozen, it attacks you, it bumps away the other Reapers. And that just moves them out of the position that would have gotten them frozen. If you're still watching then, well, thank you a lot. So there is the run and as you can see, it's a pretty good start off. You know, I bump him into the corner there, my favorite corner. And well, then this happens. Okay, not amazing, but he still gets hit by quite a lot of the rune tracers. But it, it's not an optimal position, okay? So if this was perfectly well executed and I would have just, you know, put myself into the right position there, it would have been fine, but he's now in the prime spot where the rune tracers will stop bouncing to the left side or way less often and just bounce around him like crazy. And the kill is not a fast. It's not the fastest kill I've ever done. But that will just show how crazy the damage of the Rune Tracer is in comparison to any other weapon that you can get. Uh, the reason why I did that is I was told that hey, when I accidentally picked up uh, Labora, when I did the modding video, you know, to allow all the weapons to be picked up in one run. So one run with all 34 weapons back then. Uh, someone said, yeah, Labora did like 200k something damage. And I said, no, that's only because it hit so many Reapers over the course of the run. It barely has an effect. So let's just check it out at the very end. Keep in mind the Reaper has 1.2 million health and the Labora is hitting the Reaper on the left side as well. So it's not just this one here. And you might be surprised how small the damage is of that powerful weapon. It's, it's actually, it's just straight up something to laugh at. Um. And the Reaper just died. That is amazing. There was a kill within 1 minute 30. It's, you know... It's twice as long as my fastest time, but there you can see it. It, it. It's a joke. It's a joke. 84k, 89k, and 52k, it's simply nothing. I hope you enjoyed it. 
It would be amazing if you could give the video a like and subscribe if you want to watch more. If not, then have a nice day either way.